So there's specific characteristics that these animals have, one of them being the big furry coats that you guys, what did you do with mice? <laughs> we, we made woolly mice. <laughs> See if you can find that. <laughs> the, the, and the only, the only like unintended consequences was they were cute as fuck. Like <laughs> they, people lost their minds, right? Like we're there's there's I was I was on the phone recently with a you know moderately aggressive um, journalist and uh, and it was going quite poorly <laughs> as some calls go. Moderately aggressive. <laughs> Mod- they were being aggressive in what they, way? Like some why people, are you doing this? Some people, yeah. They they everyone likes look to how fight cute. It. Yeah. So. They're, My daughter actually found this online and wants one. Yeah, so we get that a lot from kids. She wants from a mouse. <laughs> so every week, every week, um, I don't have my laptop. I should have brought it in here. Look how cute. But every week. Oh, my God, they're adorable. So this, so these woolly mice aren't just adorable. We basically said, look, what are the core genes that drive the hair phenotype or physical attribute of a, of a mammoth? Um, from an Asian elephant to a mammoth. And then because we tr- want to do this in the most ethical way as possible, there's about 200 million years of genetic divergence between mice and elephants. We didn't just want to ram mammoth DNA in there and see what happens. So we look for the mouse equivalent, right? So we look for, like, all of us have similar genes. And so we can try to look for those genes and then edit those genes with the data we got from the mammoth so that we're then not just putting random genes in there that could either hurt the animal or kill them, right? Or they may not even be compatible with life, right? So we try to be really, really thoughtful about it. And the, the, the woolly mice um, went like, it, it went insane. There's people that are like making t-shirts, there's a meme coin. Uh, <laughs> and so we, we, we made 36 mice. They're all, they're all healthy. There's 36 mice that we wow. made. Um, and what was crazy about it is we're excited about it because it shows that the end-to-end process of taking data from an ancient G- uh, DNA, c- comparing it to a living animal, making those changes, doing it with 100% efficiency. And that's really important and really hard. So we did it with 100% efficiency. Yeah, that that's wow, the, the that's, difference. Well, so the, the One mouse, of them, if it was in a trap, you'd be so sad. Yeah, like exactly. the little guy on the left, if he was in a trap, I'd be like, oh, what could we killed? Isn't that funny? Just a little bit of fur yeah. makes you love them. And that's the color that we think most mammoths were. So, really? They were yeah, like a blonde. They were like they were like a golden brown color, wow. right? Because when we pull them out of the permafrost, they've been sitting in mud for quite some time. Uh, but if you see very fresh mammoths, like from uh, Siberia and whatnot, like in Yakuts and other places in northern Siberia that they actually have uh, pretty, pretty well-preserved mammoths, they actually have kind of a... Uh, dirty blonde meets uh, gold meets brown fur. Wow! And so when we so we did that, and now there's people that are making T-shirts that aren't us and pillows that are like legalized woolly mice. I'm like, they're not illegal. <laughs> and then the, there, a meme account for the guy that did the like the CRISPR babies, you know, that went in trouble for you know making edited in babies China? in China. Yeah. yeah, a meme account. Oh wow! So yeah. that's mammoth fur. Yeah, wow. a meme account though uh, actually said on on X that that uh, these are a bioweapon. <laughs> And that Colossal's made a bio. So the, the the weirdness of the woolly mouse went crazy viral. What we were trying to show is that we used our multi multiplex editing tools, meaning that we edited all of those genes at the same time. Most people edit one gene, let that mouse live. From the second lineage, they'll do one more gene, let that mouse live, and then they'll stack those edits over multiple generations. We've developed a system so that we can deliver all of those edits at one time all over the genome, get exactly what we want, and then we have this mo- what's called monoclonal screening where we're screening the cells at the end, sequencing all the cells, which is expensive and sounds like overkill, but then we know that none of them have unintended consequences or off-target effects in the, in the genome so that we know the mice that we then do cloning with, we know that they'll be healthy. Mm. And so, so we try to spend a lot of time you know, on that because we're certified by American Humane Society. It's the oldest humane organization in the world. And um, if you've seen the film, that's like no animals were harmed in the making of this film. That's those guys. Right. So, so we've ended up um, – uh, so, so we really care about kind of not just the de-extinction efforts, the genome engineering efforts, but ensuring that the animals are healthy when they come out. And so the, the woolly mouse was a really interesting proof of concept. It shows that the edits that we are working on are working right and we're getting exactly what we predicted. Is there any plans to sell those? No, everyone keeps asking us that. But you know what? <laughs> Museums the... actually are now calling us saying, uh, and, and zoos are calling us saying, can we display the woolly mice? They're like, it'll drive so much value. It'll teach people about you know genetics and whatnot. So you know, it's, it's not our business model to sell 
our animals or to sell, you know, woolly mice. But it it's kind of gone crazy. Is it dangerous though to leave these mice in the hands of someone, even at a zoo, who decides I want more of these? Yeah, if we ever if we ever put them, I think more likely we'd put them in a museum for that needs to be free, like the Smithsonian or something like that, from an education perspective, versus something that's more attraction based. I think we do it more in the case of. A do museum. you plan on keeping this batch alive? Yeah, they're going to live out their normal lives, and uh, but you're not going to make new ones. Um, we may make new ones what with if they new, breed? these won't, they're all separated. They're all separated okay. by sex. So we're not going to have like a Jurassic Park moment where they change. Um, uh, they're all separated by sex. But if you, uh, if Jamie finds a picture of their habitats, they actually live, they live a couple years, but they don't live like t- traditional lab mice that live in like a small little cage and all on top of each other. Mm. Um, the They actually live in pretty sweet digs that we made for them. Uh, that are all, yeah, like <laughs> we, made, we, we, <laughs> oh, we spared no expense. Cool little uh, house. Yeah, and they're big and we, you know, we put fun stuff in them to play with like, like this. And what's been crazy is we only named two of them and we named him Chip and Dale because we, <laughs> we people were asking what the names were, and I was like, uh, "Chip is the only thing that I could think of at the moment." And now, even on X, people are like, "We need pictures of Chip. Where is Chip? We've only seen pictures of Dale." And there's like these incredible internet sleuths that are like, "That's not Chip. That's Dale. We need a picture oh, of Chip." Yeah, you so, can't get involved. Yeah. So we've just yeah. We, don't don't get involved with those people. <laughs> we've not we've not leaned in. Yeah. <laughs> you cannot. We're excited. They're excited, but we just can't. We, yeah. Yeah. We're busy. <clears throat> so. Uh, so this is a new thing. The the woolly mouse is a new thing. Mm-hmm. Is there any talk about doing other kind of new things? So it's more of a proof of technology. I think that the mouse model, because it's a 20-day gestation versus 22 months in elephants, it's, it's a great way to test phenotypes because with – you know, with a, a mammoth, you have three ways to test if you got the edits right. One, you can do molecular tests. You can do DNA sequencing to see if it worked. Uh, two, I guess there's four. Uh, two, you could grow a mammoth and see if it looks like it, but that's a lot of work in 22 months, like a lot of gestational time, a lot of money. Uh, I think there's a lot of risk in that. The third, and this is a little weird, we created what's called induced pluripotent stem cells. So we created cells that you can then turn into any type of tissue. So we actually do have mammoth hair follicles growing in a lab. So we have hair growing in Petri dishes in the lab, which is pretty cool. If you come see the lab, you, you'll get the, the whole Willy Wonka tour of it, which is pretty cool. Um, and then then the fourth way is mice, right? Because it's like if we can then engineer them into mice, we can see immediately within 20 days – if the edits were working, if there were any unintended consequences that would be detrimental to the animal. Wow. So we'll probably make more iterations of the woolly mice. Um, the thylacine's closest living relative is the fat-tailed dunnart, which is a mouse-sized marsupial. And it actually gestates in 13 and a half days versus 20 days. So there's no reason to do it in mice when you can do it immediately in the model species. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Uh, 